that's not a very good reason. Common errors in causal reasoning. In the last episode, you learned about causal reasoning. You saw that it can be a complicated process, but it can be very useful to work through some of the most challenging problems people face in their personal lives, communities, workplaces, and governments. In this episode, you will learn about some of the most common mistakes people make when they engage in causal reasoning. Learning about these potential pitfalls will make you more aware of the challenges that come with trying to make causal arguments. Understanding these common mistakes can help you make your own arguments, as well as the arguments offered by others, stronger. Mistaking correlation for causation. You know about the difference between correlation and causation. Confusing the two, believing that correlation equals causation, is one of the most common mistakes people make when they're engaged in causal reasoning. People often have preconceived beliefs about things, and these can influence their causal reasoning. For example, many people believe that taking vitamin C and zinc will prevent them from getting a cold. So when someone takes vitamin C and zinc and does not get a cold, he says, C, taking vitamin C and zinc prevented me from getting a cold. In fact, it may just be a coincidence that he did not get sick. The fact that the two things occurred together does not mean one caused the other. Post hoc, ergo propter hoc. Imagine you're walking through your neighborhood just after a thunderstorm. You turn a corner and you see a house on fire. One of your neighbors is standing near the house and tells you, Did you see that big storm that came through? That house was struck by lightning. Do you assume that the lightning strike caused the fire? It might seem like you have a good reason to believe that it's true, but in fact you later learn that the fire was deliberately set by the homeowner just minutes before the lightning strike. It was just a coincidence that lightning hit the house, making you think that it was the cause of the fire. If you did assume that the lightning was the cause, you just committed a post hoc ergo propter hoc error. That is a Latin phrase that means after this, therefore, because of this. The error is assuming that because B occurred after A, then B must have been caused by A. While two things occurring in sequence is consistent with the first causing the second, it's not always true. Just because two things that seem connected occur in a particular order does not mean that there is necessarily a connection or that there's a causal relationship. It's much more important that you remember why this is an error than remember the name. Missing a common cause. Imagine you've determined that you've observed a correlation between two things, X and Y. X and Y seem to occur and change together. It's possible that there is a causal relationship between them. Either X causes Y or Y causes X. But there is another possible explanation. Both X and Y might actually be caused by Z, a third factor that you haven't even thought of yet. A common error in reasoning occurs when we move from correlation to causation without first examining the situation to figure out if there are some missing pieces we haven't accounted for. Missing additional causes. You just learned about an error of reasoning in which some other factor, in this case, the common causal factor for X and Y, is missed. A related error also involves missing factors, in this case, missing out on additional causal factors. It may be true that X causes Y, but not on its own. In order for Y to occur, both X and Z are necessary. As you've learned in building a causal argument, you need to make sure you include any and all necessary causes, as well as making sure that the factors you've identified are sufficient to cause the outcome. If not, you have committed an error in not seeing the full causal story. In the previous examples, you were asked to consider how to explain causality between two correlated things, X and Y. When we know two things are correlated, we often then try to find out if it is true that one of those things caused the other. Sometimes, we commit an error by getting it wrong. We think X caused Y, but really, it's the other way around. Y caused X. 
Take the relationship between attendance and grades. Many people would argue that good attendance causes good grades. Because this is a fairly common assumption, you might be tempted to accept that causal reasoning without digging any deeper. But it is possible that the relationship goes the other way, that getting good grades leads to good attendance and vice versa. Perhaps students who do poorly on exams and assignments at the beginning of the semester stop coming to class. We all have preconceived ideas about relationships, which can lead us to make assumptions about causal relationships that are not necessarily justified. Missing mutual causation, feedback loops. So we've established a range of possible relationships between two factors, X and Y. It may be true that X causes Y. The reverse may be true, Y causes X. Or both may be false, and in fact, Z causes both X and Y. Maybe X causes Y, but only if Z is also present. There is another possibility that is often missed. Have you ever heard the phrase feedback loop? The idea of a feedback loop describes a causal relationship in which two factors actually cause each other. A causes B, then B causes A to increase, which leads to an increase in B, and so on. Think about the following example. Children who read a lot at a young age get better at reading. As reading gets easier, children are more likely to read. These children, who are now reading more, get even better at reading, and so on. In order to avoid the error of missing out on such a mutual relationship, make sure you do not stop analyzing a situation once you've identified a causal relationship. As you can see from this episode, causal relationships can be very complex. When you apply your critical thinking skills, you should be as thorough and deliberate as possible in considering all options and explanations. Slippery slopes. One final error to be aware of comes up when you're working through a problem by identifying the direct cause of something and then moving backward to see if there are any indirect causes. As you start to identify indirect causes, you must be careful to make sure that the causal relationships at each step are strong. Let's take a look at a complex situation. Say you determine that A causes B, which then causes C, which then causes D. Let's assume that D is an undesirable outcome, something you'd like to stop from happening. Since C is the direct cause of D, you must stop C in order to stop D. But something else has caused C, leading you back up the chain until you get to what seems to be the starting point for the whole causal chain, A. Thus, your solution to the problem of D is to figure out a way to stop A from happening. That complicated argument is justified as long as you're right about each step in the causal chain. However, sometimes when people go through the process of trying to figure out a complex path like the one from A to D, identifying both direct and indirect causes for outcomes, they make mistakes about the nature of the relationships along the path. Suddenly, what was really just correlation is identified as causation, and we accept the argument that A leads to D we've slipped quickly down the slope from A to D, instead of pausing at each step along the way to make sure we've evaluated the relationships correctly. Consider the argument that before the age of nine, children don't have the mental ability to perform abstract reasoning. Mathematics requires high levels of abstract reasoning. If children try to do mathematics and are unable, they become frustrated and give up. So, in order to avoid children giving up on mathematics, we should not teach mathematics to children under the age of nine. There are numerous opportunities for making errors in causal reasoning in this example. Each step needs to be examined to see if the causal relationship holds, such as to determine which way the causal relationship goes, or if there are other factors like the quality of teachers that have not been considered. To determine causes of events can be complex and challenging. It's hard to know what caused what, when you merely see them occur at close to the same time. It's hard to know which one causes the other, or whether the two events were caused by something you haven't considered yet. Understanding the types of mistakes in reasoning can help sort out these complex relationships.